Hermione Wilde's reads When to Cry on the Bus by R.A. Shockley, Grenville, SC, 1955. I like first grade, but I hate the bus. Mr. Hendricks takes me home in it every day, from school to the bench, by the drugstore, where Mum meets me. It's a city bus, big, white, smelly and near empty. When I'm good, Mr. Hendrick pays me no attention at all. He just drives, opens the door for people, watches them drop quarters and tickets into his glass box and closes the door. He never smiles, not at anybody. Today, only a block from school, he pulled his bus to the side of the street where he never did before, a place I think he wasn't supposed to, and made its wheels bump. Then he got out of his seat and came stomping down the aisle towards me, heavy and mean-looking. His face and neck were red the whole way. He had sweat over his eyes and was looking right at me. Mr Hendricks didn't talk. He just yanked me up by my arm and dragged me up front, back to the bench right beside his seat. I used to sit there every day. Dad told me to when he rode home with me on my first day. But yesterday I'd been twirling and playing on its pole right before the first time Mr Hendricks stopped his bus. That time he stopped right in the middle of the street and cars honked. He got out of his chair that time too, grabbed and squeezed my shoulders so hard they hurt and yelled, sit. That's what he said when he got back in his chair and shoved his stick. It made a loud scrunchy noise like maybe he broke something. I could see his face in the front mirror and he saw me back. He looked like he was going to yell at me again but he didn't. I sat as still as I could the rest of the way, my hands in my lap, my knees pressed tight together to keep me from moving and making him mad. I tried not to cry, and I didn't, but I knew people were watching me. My eyes got wet, but I don't think anybody saw. So that's why today I went all the way to the last row in the back, back to where the brown people sit, the ones Mr Hendricks never talks to, unless he has to. One woman had on a hat with feathers and a hundred colours. She smiled when she caught me looking, and I liked her right away. But she stopped smiling and stared at the floor when Mr Hendrick came to get me. After the bus started going again, I peeked back at her from my bench. I wasn't doing anything but trying to be good and not to cry. She smiled again, but her face was all wet. Mr Hendrick's eyes were still in the mirror watching to see if I was behaving. I didn't want him to, so I put my hands up beside my face so he couldn't do it. In the back, a nice lady raised her hand to hide her face too, but she didn't cover her eyes up like she was smiling behind her hand, but her eyes were brown and wet, like she was smiling and crying at the same time. So I cried too. We could see each other, her and me, and it didn't matter, not as long as Mr Hendricks didn't know. I hate the bus. I hate Mr Hendricks too. I can't help it. We're near the drugstore now and I'm glad Mum will be waiting there on the cement bench. And she always asks first thing when I learn today. It's fun to tell her, but I won't tell her about the bus. I hate the bus. R.A. Shockley, a long-time fan of flash fiction, lives and writes in Athens, Georgia. He is an alumnus of several writers' workshops, including Wild Acres, Bread at Loaf, Suwanee, Kenyon Review, Crazy Horse, and Appalachian Heritage, among others. Shockley has been awarded two writers' residences at the Wild Acres Retreat in North Carolina, a Pushcart nominee, 2017, R.A. Shockley has placed work in Fiction Southeast, Plus Fiction Magazine, Main Street Rag, Del Sol Review, and others. Mm-hmm.